Hello friends, welcome to lecture 11. In previous lecture, lecture 10, we saw that how primality testing fails and to overcome that, we would be learning miller rabin test. So in this lecture 11, we are going to learn about miller rabin test. All right. So there are basically three steps. Whenever you are given any equation, first of all, you would be solving is n minus one is equal to m into a raised to k. It is m. All right. m. m into a raised to k. Step two is calculate t which would be equal to a raised to m a raised to m mod n and the third step is for p is equal to 1 to k minus 1 this algorithm will follow which says that t is equal to t square mod n now if this equation returns 1 then we would directly say that the number is composite if it returns minus one, we would be saying it as prime number. All right. Using this equation, we would be getting our values of M and K, which we would be using for in the for loop. Now, the first thing which I would like to tell you is that if anywhere your K you get equals to one, then you can directly say it as the number will be composite. Why? Because if you put here k minus one, which would be equal to zero, it means that your loop will never start. So the number you have got is already composite number. All right. So now let us solve this first example, which states that n is equal to 27 and a is equal to two. All right. So we have to first of all follow step one, which is n minus one is equal to m into a raised to k. So we have to write it in the form that we get m into a raised to k sort of equation so n minus 1 is equal to m into a raised to k 27 minus 1 is equal to m into a raised to k so 26 is equal to m into a raised to k now 26 we can write it as 13 into 2 raised to 1 m into a raised to k so we can directly relate that m will be 13 and our k will be 11 so m is equal to 13 k is equal to 1 so as i told you that whenever you get your k equal to 1 you can directly say that the given number is a component composite number so here n is composite which we can clearly see because 27 is a composite number now let us move to another example where we get where we will be getting k as some another value all right so let us move to another example now in this second example we have data as n equal to 61 and a equal to 2 so according to step one n minus one is equal to m into a raised to k so 61 minus one is equal to m into a raised to k so 60 is equal to m into a raised to k now we can divide it in the form of 15 into 2 square 15 fours are 60 right m into a raised to k so we can clearly see that we got our m we got our k so m is equal to 15 and k is equal to 2 all right so now using these two values we would be finding step number two which is t so t is equal to a raised to m mod n so a is 2 m is 15 mod 61 right so as we taught you how to factorize and solve this sum we would be getting our answer t 
equal to 11 now in for loop we would be having from p equal to 1 to p equal to k minus 1 so here our k is 2 so 2 minus 1 is 1 right so only one time it states that only one time this loop will be iterating so t is equal to t square mod n t we have got as 11 so 11 square mod 61 now if you solve this again with the modulus formula using calculator which we have taught you you would be getting your answer as 60 right so in this miller rabin test we have to get our answer in the form of either positive one or negative one which is in our algorithm so if this sort of number arrives so we have to minus or we have to use the equation as t minus n whenever we will be not getting our answer directly as either 1 or minus 1 so we would be using this equation it means that 60 minus 61 which will be equal to minus 1 so according to our equation if t is equal to minus 1 it returns prime so it says that here n is a prime number so 61 is a prime number all right so this was all about miller rabin test thank you